How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And I once was a lost, but now I'm found. Was the light, but now I see so clearly. Hallelujah, grace like a rain falls down. Interesting that there's a certain amount of fact and a certain amount of selective hearing going on when people use the word grace or begin to discuss the topic of by grace you are saved and that not of yourself lest any man should boast but it is a work of God because on the one hand we want to give credit where credit is due and that is the accomplished work of Jesus Christ. 
Jesus himself has done everything that needs to be done in order to have a right relationship with God. He has restored, as it were, the opportunity to meet with and relate to God, the Father, in an intimate and personal way. He has opened the means by which we can talk to and hear from Jesus himself. He has so arranged all the means for us to hear, see, understand, and relate to God that there really is no excuse for not getting saved. And yet, there are those who will not be saved because they've chosen to forsake grace for some other means. Now, have you ever heard that expression, there's an elephant in the room? Well, that's a way, or a, it's, a, it's like an allegory of saying, we're not going to talk about it, but there's an elephant in the room. And so they always avoid the subject that is the most obvious thing that's huge that you can't avoid, which is the elephant that's in the room. And what that means is that there's something that's not being said that's so big and so important that you run right by it and you try not to admit that uh, it's kind of like when the emperor had no clothes you know that child story where everybody in the town you know the emperor was oh so wonderful that he decided that he was going to get some new clothes you know and so he contracted out to find somebody who could make him the best most beautiful clothes in the world and so one slick seamster just decided, hey, you know what? I can make him the best clothes in the world. So he got all dressed up and decked out, and he goes to the king and he says, oh, king, you know, I can make you clothes that are so magnificent that only the wisest can see and only the smartest can appreciate because they are made with invisible silk, and only the wisest and the smartest and the greatest in the kingdom can see them. So. The king says, oh, I want those, I want those. So the guy, you know, makes him a whole outfit, you know, and gets him a shirt, you know, and gets him some pants and gets him some clothes and puts him on the king. And sure enough, you know, the king made a decree to all the lands that he had these new clothes that only the wisest and only the smartest and only those that, you know, were of that particular wisdom could see his clothes. So he decided to go out and show off his new clothes. So the court, wow, they admired his clothes. Oh, look at those clothes, they're beautiful. Oh, king, king, oh, emperor, emperor, your clothes are wonderful, your clothes are wonderful. So the king obviously wanted to show the people. So he goes in a parade and starts marching down the, down the central street, you know, and he's out in public and the public and, and the crowds are going, oh, what a marvelous, marvelous clothes. And then one little child says, the emperor's got no clothes. And then suddenly everybody starts laughing. A little child told the truth. And suddenly the emperor was embarrassed because he realized he'd been took. And that's sometimes what happens in religious topics. Sometimes the full story isn't really pointed out, like the exceptions to the rule. You know, sometimes you hear a part of the story and you run with that part that you want to hear but you forget the rest of the story. And that's kind of why we've been studying grace so carefully, because we don't want to mess this up. We are talking about eternal salvation here. We're talking about really not getting into a work trip, which legalists do, and not getting into a cheap grace trip, which is what some people are doing nowadays, or get into a grace place where some people think that there's absolutely no judgment coming and no hell and no eternal damnation. Well, somewhere there's an elephant in the room. Somewhere the legalist is wrong and somewhere the cheap grace is wrong. So we need to kind of like address that elephant that's in the room. <coughs> and in this case, the elephant is God. Sorry, <laughs> you thought it was something else, I'm sure. God is real. That's the elephant, God is real. God is present. That's obvious. God is able to be known. That's quite frankly, you know, like 
as real as you and I think we are, that's how real God is. He's real. You can talk to him. You can learn from him. He responds. He's going to determine your eternal destiny sooner or later, and you're going to meet him face to face where an obvious representation of God is going to be in front of you and you're going to deal with the reality of either eternity in heaven or eternity in hell until it's cast in the lake of fire and even that's worse. So somewhere along the line we have to recognize that grace is about relationship with God. That's the, ele the elephant in the room. You can't have one without the other. Grace means that you develop or you get into a personal relationship with God. That means you're dealing one-to-one. -one. You're not dealing with you and the church. You're not dealing with you and a priest. You're not dealing with you and whatever it is that you want to put there, whether it be a rabbi, a minister, a, a elder, a deacon, a spiritual guru, or you know whatever it is that you have paid your 75 cents to hear or your nickel and dime but those are people that were meant to point you in the right direction they were meant to inspire you to get into a place where you would discover God for yourself and since God isn't going to call all these guys on the carpet to stand next to you the elephant in the room is very simple you are dealing with God alone That means you and God, you know, mano y mano. That means face to face. That means uh, you might want to get it right. <laughs> okay? So when you're thinking of grace, remember that. When you're thinking of all these different spiritual terminologies and kind of like, you know, explanations that things are trying to be made and help you to understand so you don't go off on weird ideas and get into some weird cult or some weird way of shirking your responsibility. The bottom line is uh, you're responsible for yourself. Nobody else is going to stand there with you and you have to kind of like uh, make these choices on your own for yourself. I can't make them for you. Somebody else can't make them for you. Nobody else is going to get saved for you. You have to deal with God on a one-to-one. -one. Mano y mano Man and creator, creation and creator, God and man. And that's what Jesus came to do, to get you to get back to a relationship with God. So just so you know, when you start thinking grace and, you know, like maybe you can get away with stuff, well, you're dealing with God. Remember that. That's where grace is at. That's the gospel of grace. Each one of us can relate to God even though we are far from perfect. We can still have a beautiful relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. When we relate to the Father by faith through His Son, we have a solid relationship. We are now sons of God because He is our Father. We don't have to wonder if we are worthy to come to Him. We do not come on the basis of our worthiness, but on the basis of our relationship with Him. That's the bottom line. You see, when you were a child and you got into trouble, you really didn't want to tell mom and dad because you knew you were going to get spanked. Well, when you got older, you kind of didn't want to disappoint your folks. so. When you were a teenager or when you were a little bit older, maybe you started looking at the idea that you just wanted to make them proud of you. So you, you did your best. And you know, if you had good parents, they accepted you for your best effort. You know, you tried and they were happy with that. When you get older and you have kids of your own and then you talk to your parents, you realize that your parents accept you with your fallibilities and your failings as well as your successes if they're good parents if they're not well you know <laughs> you deal with them anyways they're your parents but they realize and they recognize their own fallibilities in you because they can see in you what they were at that point in time in life and they've grown into hopefully a place of 
more mercy and grace and forgiveness that they have learned through life experiences and apply to themselves as well as to others around them. God is our parent. He is the creator of the universe. He knows what we're made out of. He doesn't treat us as though we were like, oh, you should have been perfect. That's it. You're out of there. But he knows that we're not perfect. And so he's provided a means with which we can have a relationship with him. But see, here's the elephant in the room again. There's that big honking, you know, white elephant that, you know, it's not a sale, but it's something that we need to take stock of and have a reality check about what we're missing just in case. Relationship. You have it available to you, but you have to make use of it. That's the point. There's nothing holding you back. God doesn't say, hey, I'm holy, you're not, you don't get to come to me. God says, I've done it all. I died for you, now you can talk to me. But if you don't talk to me, you're going to hell. If you don't walk with me, you're going to hell. If you don't have a personal relationship with me, your father, guess what? I may say, go to the left, go to the right, you know, and try to help you out, you know, through the night, but if you're not paying attention and, you know, kind of like, you know, talking to me and I'm talking to you, hey, you know, check it out. You ain't talking to me. I ain't talking to you. You ain't going to make it. And that's the bottom line. See, grace is based upon a relationship. You relate to God. God relates to you. You have some type of communication. I'll admit, you may have a distant communication in some ways to start with. It may be like long distance letters that you're sending back and forth. You know, you're kind of reading it rather than living it, you know, and you're kind of like learning how to hear his voice. But it should be a developing relationship. Just like a baby doesn't really know what mama and daddy are saying, but knows what the feelings are that the parents are communicating. You know, lots of smiles, you know. And the, the child can pick up on the emotion more than they can pick up on the word because their brain hasn't really made the connections. And that's kind of what you do when you're born again spiritually. You really haven't made the connections of God's voice. You can't really hear him at first. You can feel his feelings, but you can't really tell, you know, kind of like the, what the words mean. And that's why people get all wrapped up into this Holy Spirit thing. And, you know, they're really gung-ho about the emotion when they're feeling right or like they're feeling bad or they feel like God's mad at them or whatever they're feeling at the time until they learn to listen and make the connections, you know as they learn to talk with God and hear His voice. So, grace is always dependent upon relationship. You can't have grace without a relationship with God. God gives it to you by way of faith in Him, but it is by way of a relationship with Him, established through Jesus Christ, forgiving you of your sins, and maintaining a righteousness that He alone has given you that you can't do for yourself but only he in relationship to you as you have asked him to as you have desired for him to be a part of your life will do for those who he has called to himself and forgiven for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him should not perish they should not but have everlasting life now you could perish quite frankly by ignoring the word you've heard and ignoring what you just heard from me if you don't begin to develop in some way some type of communication relating to God you're going to hell and that's the fact but grace has been given to you to save you from sin but also to save you from eternal damnation and punishment for not abiding or living with the grace that's been given you and since God is the one bestowing it, that's the one you got to get to know. And so as soon as you know God, you'll find out that grace covers all your sins and you've been forgiven, including the ones you've yet to commit. Then it's a matter of growth. So grace causes growth, but grace is mandated again. One more time. The white elephant in the room is relationship with Jesus or relationship with God and you have to be communicating not just telling him what you want done.